going on everybody? It is Wednesday, May 23rd. I couldn't see the date because my microphone was blocking it. And uh, if you listened to me talk about hitters yesterday, I hope you plugged your ears because it didn't go well. Pitching, on the other hand, was great. So we should probably just listen to Jake. Jake, how'd your night go? Uh, it was all right. It should have been better with the pitching. Cole and Caleb Smith and Lance Lynn. Uh, so if you were on those guys and you had some, I think, reds you needed, and then I didn't have enough Indians either. Um, that yeah, one that, I actually would, had. Did you? I, I don't think Lindor did anything, though. I think that was the big problem. Brantley and Ramirez were fine. I thought um, Lindor was fine. Was he? Uh, I just... I could be wrong. I just remember looking at some of the top lineups last night, and it was Indians red stacks with like Barnhart and... Like, plays that I don't think we were off of just didn't really put it together. Uh, Lindor was two for four with two runs and two walks. Oh, okay. Maybe he was okay then. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see him in a lot of top lines. I mean, compared to the field, when I looked them up and, like, they had popped off early, I guess after Ramirez's home run, um, they were all at, like, two or three percent, and I had, like, 10, 11, 12. So I was really happy there, but I just couldn't. Everything was paired with, like, the Yankees or the Brewers, Baltimore, and, you know, all the teams that sucked. Pittsburgh. Yeah. I didn't Man. have Cincinnati. And then Houston wasn't even all that great in the middle of their order, at least. So it was kind of a weird night. It seems like a bunch of pitchers did really well, and a lot of people nailed pitching, and then the hitters were a completely different story. Yeah. Not fun. Like, camp for uh, the Astros at 5 RBI. Two for, yeah. two for two with 5 RBI. So, like, I didn't have them. <laughs> you know, I barely, I think I had one line of Astros. So, if I'm not going to get to Springer and Altuve and Correa, I'm certainly not getting to camp. Yep. <sighs> Weird slate tonight. Like, it's, uh, I don't know. Not my favorite. No, I'm not a big fan of it either. Pitching is very, very shallow after DeGrom. So maybe we can find a few pitchers that we like or that are serviceable. Um, but it's going to be hitting. That's going to be winning tournaments tonight, I think. Yeah, if DeGrom is the ocean, the rest of this pitching pool is like a kiddie pool because there is a chasm between these guys, particularly on FanDuel. <laughs> Uh, I've got such a gigantic gap between DeGrom and the next guy that he kind of transcends chalk tonight. So we'll have that discussion when we need to. You ready yeah. to start him? I'm ready. Starting with the Braves. Uh, Braves and Phillies. Braves 3.9 run implied total. Phillies 4.3. It's a 54% chance to win for the Phillies. Uh, Luis Gohara going for Atlanta. Jake Arrieta going for Philly. Uh, I kind of like Gohara a little bit here. I'm hoping that he can go a little deeper in the game than I would generally expect. I might end up being <clears throat> wrong there. I might need to uh, pull his projected innings back just a bit. But I like the price point. Um, Phillies, uh, you know, not the biggest implied total. So getting a guy in that salary range is something that I'll at least need to do a little bit. Um and I didn't get to any Arietta, which is kind of weird to me because I usually do. But I think for I'm <clears throat> finally starting to respect some Braves bats. Yeah. Uh, so Gahara, he went an inning and two thirds, I believe, in his last outing. That was a few days ago. So if they know, if they've known he's going to start since then, then he's fully rested and stuff. Um, Looking at some of his minor league starts, he went like four innings, four innings, three and a third, four and a third. Um, I remember him being okay last year. I don't know what kind of adjustments he's made this year, but he's a good prospect. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I remember like wanting to play him a few times last year. Um, Phillies aren't that great of a matchup against lefties. Uh, they've got Hoskins and Alfair and Santana, who we know can obviously hit lefties very well. Um, so those guys I have interest in, especially Hoskins for 4100 I I don't know why he's priced down so low. He must be slumping or something. Um, 
off there super cheap too. So I'm actually more on Philly's bats than Gohara right now. Okay. I think he has the ability <clears throat> to miss some bats here. Um, like he's got really good swing and miss stuff. Like double digit K per nine rate in double A and triple A last year. Um, you know, missed a bunch of bats so far this year. Hasn't thrown a ton <clears throat> of innings. But got a big time fastball slider combo. So I'm anxious to see how he looks tonight. The 4.3 run implied total makes me pretty happy. Like that's a that's a very reasonable total for a guy just popping in here to this start. So I'll probably end up with a little bit of him. Uh, I would guess that the ownership that I have for him will pull down a little bit uh, as we get closer to lock. But uh, I'm I'm on board for Gohara. So you don't yeah, hear I mean, me talk uh, nicely about my Braves all that often in these shows. But today is one yeah. of those days. Yeah, I think your Braves. Um... Like I think he could have a good start here. That is a pretty encouraging Vegas total, and I put more weight into Vegas when it's a new prospect or a guy I might not know as much about because they know a lot more than than I do or people betting on him do. So that is a a nice total to see for Gohara. I'm just worried about how deep he's going to go into the game. That's reasonable. Uh, Arietta, you're not on him, right? Nah, I got zero Arietta. And that's, yeah. that honestly surprises me a little bit because he has popped up a lot. I, and it's not as if his price has gotten to some like really weird price point. It's cheap, too. Uh, I think yeah. it's just a lot of Braves here. Agreed. Arietta just had that one really awesome start when he was chalk. Yeah. And I think people were on him for a long time. Uh, but he's just not really missing bats. Like His swinging strike rate for the season is 6 which is pretty awful, um, yeah. like near like Alex Cobb level, and we'll get to him. I, yeah, actually, Cobb's got six point two now. I know he was at like four for a few his first two starts, but yeah, he's just not missing bats. And if you're not going to do that against the Braves, I, I don't understand why the total is only f- like around four for the Braves. Is that what you have too? Yeah, I got three nine in here right now. Yeah, I I like the Braves as a contrarian stack then. With Freeman, Marcakis, Suzuki, um, Ozzy Albies, of course, and Acuna. Those top five, I like a lot. Uh, maybe even down to Enciarte for 4,200. I think Arietta is pretty easy to steal on, if I remember correctly. Uh, I didn't get yeah, to any bats. Like, I have highest is 2% exposure to anyone in this game. It's all basically just Gohara. Um, and I've tended to be higher on guys making their debuts than probably I should be so far. If I look back and think about guys like Bueller coming up or even Soroka when he came up. But I feel it I feel like Gohara is more Bueller than Soroka here. He's got like two swing and miss pitches. Whereas Soroka is more of a like work your way through the lineup type guy. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, any any prospect that can miss bats can cover up and have a couple nice starts right away. We've seen it happen all the time. And the same goes for hitters. Like, the scouting report is not going to be as detailed on a guy that's in AAA. So, right. He's supposed um, to have a plus fastball plus slider, which is, like, I'd like to check that out as a lefty. Yeah, the problem is there are – a decent amount of righties in this lineup and righties that can crush lefties. Yeah, so. Reese Hoskins scares the shit out of me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so should Alfair and Santana, too. Those guys have been raking against lefties, too. Very true. Very true. Yeah, I didn't I didn't really get to any bats, so I'm just hoping Gohara goes hard. I tried to make a play on his name. It didn't work really well. <laughs> just going just gonna to move on. Yankees and Rangers. Did you have anything else you wanted to touch on there? Nope. Okay, cool. Uh, Yankees and Rangers. This one will be popular. <clears throat> Yankees, 5.7 run implied total. Rangers, 4.3. It's a 63% chance to win for the Yanks. CC Sabathia going for New York. Doug Fister going for Texas. Uh, I might get to like a line or two of Sabathia, but this game is all about the hitting, particularly the Yankees side. Um, 5.7 run implied total and a matchup against Doug Fister. They're going to be pretty popular tonight, um, and they should be. I like 
you know, most of the top five and a scattering through the Hicks, Walker, and Jahar area. Um, I, I can't imagine not having a bunch of Yankees. And I would guess they'll be one of the chalkiest stacks, if not the chalkiest stack of the night. Yeah, they're going to be the chalkiest stack of the night, I think. Um, just a huge run total. Going up against Fister, he's not a good pitcher. He can't miss bats. It's great hitting weather, great park. Uh, so many things going in their favor, just like the last two nights when they faced Bartolo Colon and Cole Hamels. And we got Cole Hamels again last yeah. night. Uh, we called it, though. So at least we knew what we were getting ourselves into. Don't Didn't get the expectations up too high. I'm over it at this point. It's really getting yeah. annoying. I think I am too. I think I'm just gotta realize that Hamels is good and shouldn't be stacking against him. It's making me um, feel stupid. Yeah, that's DFS will do that. Same sometimes. for James Shields. Those two sons of bitches. Yeah, I've been off stacking against Shields for the most part this year, so I'm pretty happy about that one actually. Yeah. Um, just me. Though. Yeah. So <laughs> Yankee, Yankees just. They just got so many guys that crush. Like Torres out of the nine hole, um, he should be in the top five or six right now. It looks like, um, but he's not. Just such a deep lineup. Like you can go one through nine here. I I've, I've got no problems with with any of these guys really. So, uh, do you have a favorite? Do you have anyone you're leaving off a Yankee stack intentionally? Because I really don't. I think they are all in play. Uh, Stanton's going to be a spotlight hitter tonight. I don't get to a lot of judge on FanDuel. I think he's a little too expensive for me. Um, but I've got like 20% of Gardner, Judge, Stanton, Gregorius, Sanchez on DK. Uh, Neil Walker's only 2,500 on FanDuel. So he's the guy that's like taking up most of the extra ownership on FanDuel. Uh, I get a decent amount of Andahar on DK. I actually don't really like Torres all that much, um, but I don't think that'll surprise you. You know, he's got a pretty healthy price point, and hitting ninth, it, it's kind of hard to overcome that in fantasy. You need him to go yard each day like he's been doing, because I think he's gone yeah. yard the past two nights. Uh, but he's just really hard to get to because he, he just doesn't have the same sort of opportunities as someone higher up in the order. Uh, if we found out that he was hitting, like, sixth and Aaron Hicks was hitting ninth, uh, I think Torres would show up quite a bit here but he's just discounted because of his spot in the order i like right. the whole, i like the whole lineup yeah so i don't think we need to talk too much about the yankees but that you make a good point 4500 for a nine hole hitter is is tough to justify yeah um, he's gonna lose a full plate appearance just from hitting ninth in expectation right. uh, just because yeah uh, i don't know how much we ever talk <clears> about it but for people that are new to listening each spot you go down the order is going to be like one tenth of a plate appearance less expected uh, than the spot before it. It's actually a little bit more than point one. So basically, ninth is like a full plate appearance behind first, and uh, you know that's a lot. <laughs> I mean, that's like a full two points of fantasy production. So yeah, at least. Um, so yeah, he's uh, he's hard to go to. He shouldn't be highly owned, so like you could have. I'm actually, he might end up being over owned for his price point. He's probably, probably the just, one guy I would look to avoid, actually. Just recency bias. Yeah, yeah I mean, I'm almost like, <clears throat> get, I'm almost positive he's gone yard the last two nights. And Pretty sure he has. I, I don't know. Like he'll be popular, and he's like he's a young dude. He he's on the Yankees, so I can see him being owned too much for. The logistics of his spot. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Oh, uh, I hit two home runs two nights ago. Last so night. he's, he has three yeah. in two three nights and, two and nights. four in the yeah. past four games. Yeah. Uh, I have interest in Sabathia, and I almost never do, but just kind of a slate thing. He's 7,900, um, and he's just been lights out against lefties this year. 35% K rate, uh, 253 XFIP, 16.7% hard contact. And the Rangers are probably going to throw four lefties at him. And lefties that wave and miss all the time. So Chu, Mazzara, Gallo, and Odor. Um, <clears throat> it's not like Sabathia can't strike out some righties too. I mean, I'm not expecting a bunch of them, but 
Chirinos and Falefa De Shields, these guys will all strike out too. Um, so 7,900 for Sabathia, even in bad hitters weather, I think, or bad pitching weather, like, I'm going to have some interest. He may be a spotlight pitcher. Interesting. I prefer the <clears throat> lefty directly above him. <laughs> Who's that? Lester. Yeah, so that one's easy for me. I'd, I'd go Sabathia. I prefer but. the lefty directly above him <clears throat> to David Price. <laughs> mm, yeah. We'll we'll talk about him soon. I don't I don't mind Price. Okay. I'll end up with a lot of Lester, so I guess <clears throat> I'll I'll lead the charge on that once we get down to the Cubs. Uh, are you looking That's at fair. any Rangers? Because I'm not. Um. No, not really. Like, I got I I got one lineup of Delino to Shields, and that's it. Yeah, I think that's more than enough for me. I won't have really any Rangers, I don't think. No, same. Angels and Jays. Angels, 4.7 run implied total. Blue Jays, 4.1. It's a 57% chance to win for the Angels. Tyler Skaggs going for the Angels. Aaron Sanchez going for Toronto. Uh, This is not a pitching game for me. This is all hitting. And I feel like for the first time in a while, I'm actually going to end up with a lot of Angels. And I'm I'm really happy about it. <laughs> yeah, um, I like you. You don't have any interest in Skaggs. Uh, I think I got him in one line on DK. Uh, Ninety six hundred is a lot. Like I have my Ada four point one fantasy points ahead of Skaggs tonight, and only two hundred dollars more. And I have Price two points ahead of Skaggs at. Eight hundred dollars less, so he's in a really rough spot from a price perspective. I have Skaggs. I mean, I have him like he should be priced at like seven thousand. <laughs> so I'm very yeah. anti Skaggs tonight. I wish we could. I wish he was priced better here. I'd have a little bit more interest in him. Um, it's just tough with probably eight to nine righties yeah. for the Blue Jays, and you got guys like Donaldson and Smoke and Hernandez and. Russell Martin, who can hit the ball really hard. Um, so he worries me. I wouldn't be shocked if he has a really nice start here, and I'd probably want to get some exposure to him if I made a bunch of lineups. Um, but it's just tough for me to, to recommend Skaggs as like some awesome play tonight, even though I think he is a pretty good pitcher. I agree. I think he's, um, I think he's a better pitcher than he is in this matchup today for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree there. Um, so... Sanchez on the other side, he's got a 6.54 xFIP against lefties this season, and he's actually getting hit harder by righties. So it's a little bit confusing. I don't know what to do with that. Um, I guess I can just say he, he has not been very good. Yeah. Uh, just don't play so, him. I think that's what you can do with it. Yeah, he's been weird. If you look at like swinging strike rate and all that, and like whiffs per swing, like some starts he's been lights out, some he's been just awful. Can't miss a bat to save his life. Um, and the Angels are not really going to allow you to miss bats. So Trout, Upton, I love Otani, Anderson Simmons. Um, yeah, I like I like some Angels here for sure. First five for me, I have a ton of. And then I get a bit of Simmons, Cozart, and Calhoun on FanDuel. Uh, the Angels are going to be hyper popular for me. Let's see where they have them. They're my third most owned stack on FanDuel right now. Oh, yeah, I love that. Um I would definitely have some Angels. Sanchez is, like I said, very confusing. Don't really know what he's going to do from game to game, at least this year. Um, He's usually been good at limiting hard contact, but that hasn't really been the case this year. So I'm more apt to stack against him than in years past. I talk about it a lot, like how I don't get to Aaron Judge all that often. But Mike Trout is $500 cheaper than Aaron Judge on FanDuel. That's kind of the that reason never why happen. I don't ever get to Aaron Judge. Yeah, that shouldn't happen. Because Trout has, like, as weird as this sounds, Trout's got, like, comparable-ish power and then does everything else. <laughs> so, yep. yeah, when when if Trout is going to be $500 cheaper than Aaron Judge, that's why I end up with not as much Aaron Judge. I think that's very understandable and a smart play over the long run. Yeah. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm high, high, high on the Angels tonight. I'm, I'm excited for it. I feel like I haven't had them in forever. Like, I rarely get a chance to cheer for them. They've been 
relatively highly priced, not having the best matchups as of late. So I'm I'm pumped for this. Yeah, I, li- I like the Angels. I'm, I'm right there with you. Oh. All right, Marlins and Mets. This one's gross. Marlins 2.9 run implied total. Mets 4.1. It's a 65% chance to win for the Mets. Uh, Dan Straley going for Miami. Jake DeGrom going for the Mets. Uh, I'm going to end up with a ton of DeGrom. He's by far the most popular pitcher for today. He's by far the best option today. Um, Because of his price point, I have him a full eight points higher than the next guy on FanDuel. Um, And in situations like that, you don't need even like DeGrom's best day to be at the top of the leaderboard. Um, Even though DeGrom is going to be very, very chalky on FanDuel, I'll still end up with a lot of him because there's not an alternative to really make that up. Uh, He's... He's just by far the best option today. Um, I don't. I don't really have much else that I could even say about it. <laughs> it's, it would be yeah. redundant. Yeah, me too. Uh, number one option by far. He's going to be major chalk, highest owned pitcher of the night. I don't think it's going to be really close at all on either site. Um, on Fanduel, I don't. I don't know how I could get away from him. Just like he's not even that expensive. Ten four. You can do a lot with that. Um, like. Skaggs is ninety one hundred. Imagine not wanting to spend the extra thirteen hundred dollars they get from Skaggs to Degrom. I've got them with a fourteen point fantasy gap. It's like a whole nother pitcher. Yeah, I just don't see a way that Degrom really disappoints. I know he. I'm pretty sure he had a disappointing start against the Marlins in his first start against them or or something. I remember the maybe it was were like scrappy to start the season. Yeah, and they still should be like like Prado and Bohr and. Um, Real Muto, you know, they're whatever. Yeah, he gave um, up four. He gave, it was his worst start. I'm putting that in quotes. He had six Ks, one walk, seven hits. They just clustered, and he gave up four runs. Gave up one of the two home runs that he's given up all year. So I'll just assume that, you know, that was bad luck. He's, for the game, he still only had a three and a half X FIP. So, like. Yeah, 11.9% swinging strike rate. Yeah. Like, you know, he was getting some chases. There, I mean, there's just nothing bad to say about DeGrom in this matchup. I wouldn't get cute trying to target bats against him. No. And if you're fading him, it's for ownership. It's not for matchup, I don't think. Um, you know, there's always game theory fading a 60, 70, 80% owned pitcher. Um, especially when you can pay up for a ton of expensive bats. If you want to full stack the Yankees and can't get to DeGrom or something, then that's understandable. But I wouldn't be going out saying... Like I'm intentionally fading Degrom because I think that's just pretty like a pretty bad play, um, and I don't think there's any way that that works out outside of an injury. Um, well, I shouldn't say anyway. It is baseball. Stuff stuff can happen. Um, do you have any interest in the Mets bats? Because you're not targeting any Marlins, right? Uh, just a little bit of Dan <clears throat> Straley on DraftKings. Wow. Oh. I'll have. I don't know, probably like 6-7% Dan Straley, if I had to guess. Um, yeah. I'm... Only a 4.1 run implied total for the Mets, so I can't just totally disregard Straley. <clears throat> There's something pointing to like decentness there. I don't love it, um, but I do like the idea of him being relatively low-owned and me having like a few shares of it. Now, if, I, like, if he's going to be 1%, I won't have 11. I'll have six but i mean i think he might be a little bit popular here because it is the mets they're like a perceived good matchup but i mostly want to target them against uh lefties as far as playing pitchers against them so i think straley's been one of the luckiest pitchers i was telling you before the show uh he's got a or he had a 70 percent hard hit rate against the braves last time out but his ending line was seven innings, six Ks, no earned runs. Um, he's got a lot of regression coming, over 50% hard contact to both righties and lefties this year, 62.5% to lefties. This is obviously a small sample, but like lefties are just pulling everything, hitting it really hard, and the Mets will start out with four to five lefties. Is that what you have? Uh, yeah. yes. Nemo. Everything but yes. Flores. It's, wait, so I've I love, got one, two, three, four. I've got five of six. 
Yeah. Oh, Adrian Gonzalez. Okay. Yeah. So I love the top five lefties. Um, and the Mets are actually one of my favorite stacks of the night. I hope they go under own because of that total. Um, I love Conforto, Bruce. I like Nimmo. Love as Drupal Cabrera. So I'll be on these Mets and hoping this is the regression game for Dan Straley. Yeah, I got a couple lines <clears throat> of Mets on both sites. Um, they'll be guys, you know, like they'll. I'll have a couple. Is basically all I can say. They're not. They're not a big focus, but they're not a, a zero stack for me. Yeah. Uh, Flora is actually the guy that's coming up the most, but that's strictly because of price. Twenty four hundred on Fanduel, only thirty two hundred on DK, plus the dual eligibility. I think he looks great there. Hey, maybe they'll scratch Jay Bruce for uh, Braves cast off Joey Bats again. Yeah, I think he hit a double or, or he, he scored a run in his first plate appearance. Did he really? Uh, so yeah, he did. Much. I don't know if he scored a run for the Braves. I don't, I don't think he did. Nah, he was, oh. I don't know, he was like 10 for 60 or something, I think, when I read the article. Wow. Uh, That's pretty bad. See. What did he finish? Yeah, he was one for three with a run scored and two Ks. What did he do for the Braves? Uh, and that was against the GOAT, Caleb Smith, too. So not just some Caleb mediocre Smith. pitcher, Caleb Smith. Uh, let's see. Joey Bats was 5 for 35 with the Braves. Uh, a crisp 143 average. So, you know, I texted my one of my best friends that's a Mets fan. I was like, enjoy our sloppy seconds. He's like, yeah, yeah. we're just making real moves now. Got to sign... 44-year-old Jose Bautista. Off the scrap heap of the... Still in first place? Oh, I don't know. I don't I don't pay attention to standings, really. It's kind of it's kind of bad. I should. Um, they are... No, nope, they're not in first anymore. <clears throat> they're not even first. Well, they had a good run. Oh, well, maybe they are. It's... Fuck. That's a weird... The standings page is all jacked up on uh, fan graphs because of... They are in first. Um, they're a game and a half up on the Phillies. All right, all right. Uh, Phillies and Braves, wow. chart was sorted by projected end-of-season record. I was like, what the... They have more... Why are they third? But, yeah, they're not... Uh, fan graphs in 538, not confident in the Braves' chances to make the playoffs. I'll say that much. <laughs> it's like 30% or something right now. Their offense can carry them. They've got a couple of good arms in there. Newcomb and I don't know who else I'm forgetting for the Braves, but Gohara. I think they're... Gohara. <laughs> Here yeah. he comes. We'll see after today. Yeah. Uh, Pirates and Reds. <clears throat> God, I, I don't want to roster the Pirates again yet. Here we are. Pirates, five run implied total. Reds, 4.7. It's a 52% <laughs> chance to win for the Pirates. Chad Cool going for Pittsburgh. Homer Bailey going for Cincinnati. Uh, I was on Polanco big time and the Pirates yesterday big time. That was not the play. Guess what? We're doing it again. I don't want either of the pitchers. I just want a ton of Pirates hitters. I also want a little bit of the Reds tonight. But Pirates are going to be another one of my most popular stacks. They're my number one stack on FanDuel and my number three stack on DK right now. Tell me I'm stupid. No, I don't think you're stupid at all. Um, Homer Bailey, we know his deal. Just so much hard contact, does not miss bats. That's a terrible com combination in Great American Ballpark. And the Pirates have some big power from the left side. So, like Dickerson, Polanco, Colin Moran homered last night, Josh Bell. Uh, Meadows, the new prospect, I believe he homered two last night. He did. Um, so, I like one through seven. Uh, Cervelli for the Pirates is hitting very well this year. Um, Harrison's not my favorite, <clears throat> so he'll probably get left out of some Pirates stacks, but two through seven, really, I should say, is where I'm focused on. Um, I, d I love the Pirates once again, even though they didn't really come through last night. Yeah, you're crazy about Meadows on DK and not Harrison, but other than that, I'm with you. <laughs> Lefty power. 4,100 in the seven hole for an outfielder, that, that one's tough for me. I don't get to him at all. He's only 2,700 on FanDuel. I get to him plenty there. But Harrison I I, leading off at 3,900 for a second baseman, he fits in stacks really, really well. Yeah, I mean, I I should probably play some Harrison, but just in general, not really a guy I want to play. But if I'm having a bunch of pirate stacks, he'll you. probably sneak into a couple, so... 
Yeah, I'm not trying to claim like Josh Harrison's any good, <laughs> but price and matchup and such. Uh, I love Polanco again. I probably would have wrote him up in spotlight hitters, but I really didn't want to have people bitch at me, so I went with Josh Bell instead, just to avoid the repetitive nature of it. But I like them both. I have them both a ton. They both have great prices. It's a, I love the matchup. Five run implied total, second highest on the slate. It's hard to avoid the Pirates. Yeah, it really is. Um, they're not even, you know, priced up. Like Polanco, forty four hundred. You can be fine with that. Dickerson, four thousand. I love Dickerson actually. I think he's my favorite um, Pirates play here. So I'll have a ton of him and a ton of the rest of the guys, but mostly Dickerson. I'm with you. I do like the top part of the uh, Reds order. Uh, not the biggest, like, Chad Cool believer or anything. So, Winker, Votto, uh, Jeanette homered last night. A big homer, too, I think. I want to say, like, a three-run dong or something. But I've got uh, a smattering of reds. Are, are you looking at them in any way? <clears throat> yeah, I don't mind three through six. So, Votto, Jeanette, Suarez, you know, just has huge power. And then Shebler. Um well, and Barnhart, if he's in there, I guess. So maybe he could get to an actual full red stack now that I'm looking at it. Um, cool, just giving up a bunch of hard contact to lefties. Striking him out at a decent rate, but he can be very volatile at times. Uh, that shows in like his XFIP 4.56 against lefties. Um, I'm, I'm not the biggest Chad Cool believer either, so I have no problem targeting some bats against him. Yeah, uh, I think I like Jesse Winker way more than I should tonight, at least on FanDuel, but he's 2300 so it's <clears throat> another one of those cases where you get somebody that's super-duper cheap in a leadoff spot. It's hard to go a different direction because it just allows you to do so much other stuff. Yeah. 4.7 run implied total for the Reds is legit. It's one of the higher totals of the day, so don't sleep on them because you see them as underdogs, people. Agreed. Red Sox and Rays. Red Sox, four-run implied total. Rays, 3.5. I'm missing whoever's hitting fifth for the Rays. So let's figure that out now. Willie Adamas. Let's fix that quick. Oh, yeah. He, he just came up. Was that last night? Yeah. I had him in here, but he he wasn't. Uh, he might not be in the player pool on one of the sites. Maybe Fanduel. Probably Fanduel. Um. Anyway, uh, fifty-five percent chance to win for the Red Sox. David Price going for Boston. Chris Archer going for Tampa. Uh, I don't get to either of these guys on Fanduel. Kind of breaks my heart that I don't ever get any David Price anymore. But I get a bunch of Archer on DK, not Price. That's just really? like it's terrifying <clears throat> right now. I don't like that at all. Archer's hitting like ownership caps for me on DraftKings, so I'm really, really anxious to see where Alex ha how Alex has Chris Archer ranked and what we project his ownership at because I think Archer the way that it's set up right now, Archer is going to be the guy that I'm way over the field on and. It, I couldn't be like less excited to cheer for that tonight. I like Archer, but I don't really like running face first into the Red Sox bats. Yeah, like I, I just don't really want to target against Red Sox bats. No, really at all. Neither They're, do I. <laughs> but I'm going like to they it. just have they just have these innings where they just look unstoppable. They did against Faria last night. Like he went through, mowed him down. Um, First and second inning, and then I was watching a little bit of the third inning, and just like base hit, base hit, and then Betts got up, 0-2 count, battled the 3-2, and then hit a bomb on 3-2, and then Faria left with an injury. Otherwise, the Red Sox stack could have been um, something special. Um, so, anyway, like the Red Sox are just so so tough, one through nine. Yeah. Um, I wonder if Archer is going to be owned because of the Red Sox implied total and because he's a big name. Um, the thing with Archer, it always has been his thing. When he gets hit, he gets hit really hard, like 46% hard contact against 
righties, you know, Betts and Hanley, JD, Bogarts can all hit righties, can hit anyone. Um, and the Red Sox are going to put the ball in play. So I'm really worried about Archer here. I actually like a Red Sox stack with some of those guys that I just mentioned. I, I barely got to any Red Sox tonight, but that doesn't totally surprise me based on the run total and sort of how much I'm liking Archer. Uh, naturally don't get to the Red Sox all that much. Uh, I think just basically one couple one-offs of Nunez, Betts, and Benintendi. We'll see if that line moves at all. Um, that could change things here, but as of right now, I'm I'm holding to see our uh, boss's outlook on Chris Archer because I'm assuming he's going to have him as an A value on both sites. Or an A value on DK, at least. Just based on the way this stuff usually looks for me. And if he does, then I'm going to probably be double the field on Chris Archer with like all of my fingers and toes crossed. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really interested to see what the ownership projection is going to be for Archer. Um, so that's what I'll be looking at. You can get your Osmo.com premium membership and you can see that too at 4 Eastern when that comes out. I like that. Um, but yeah, no, I, I actually use those ownership projections. It's not just me saying that. Uh, they are very important when I'm making my lineups or lineup when I'm single entering. So if Archer's going to be chalked, there's a case to be made to go with the Red Sox stack because that's a really awesome leverage play when you can play uh, the Red Sox against the chalk pitcher. Um, but, I mean, I get, I get the Archer play too. If he's got his stuff, he could easily strike out some of these Red Sox and have a nice start for 6,700. Yeah, I mean, like, he's <clears throat> he has the swing and miss stuff. It's just mm -hmm. not every team has a top six like the Red Sox. And, and he I'm, navigated. I'm probably like selling Eduardo Nunez and Jackie Bradley a bit short in that statement too. So He navigated the Angels really well last night, or last night, last start. Uh, he went six and two-thirds, five strikeouts. He walked four. Um, so not a perfect start by any means, but um, he could – certainly do that again. I just wouldn't expect him to get double-digit strikeouts. Like, if he goes six innings and strikes out four or five guys and doesn't get blown up, then you're fine for 6,700 with Archer. I'm going to see what I have him projected for strikeouts-wise. I've got him for 6 point, 6.25 strikeouts tonight. That would be... I mean, you'd be thrilled at 6,700 with that. Yeah. God, that scares me. I don't normally look at uh, like strikeout props because those things usually have like fifty dollar limits, so anyone can really move the line if you want to. But I'd like to see what they have the line set for Archer strikeout prop tonight. And I bet it's five and a half or something. If yeah, shades to the over. Then uh, Chris Archer might be. Just sticking with that heavy, heavy ownership tonight. And then you don't, you said you don't like Price. <clears throat> uh, I got him in seven percent of the lines on DK. I didn't get him at all on FanDuel. Um, he's a guy that like will just sort of get rotated in as a second starter. Um, yeah, I mean, I, don't I know, couple four, five, six lineup, something like that. Yeah, he's not he's not Chris Sale, but you know, Sale just dominated <clears throat> the Royals last night or the Royals, the Rays, and he's another lefty. You've got some of these call-ups. Um, no Wilson Ramos probably left last night with an injured thumb. Um, so I have some interest in Price. I think I prefer Sabathia as of now, but I I do like the Price play. Interesting. All righty. This one's gonna be uh, this one's gonna be an interesting game for me. It will. The outcome of the Red Sox Rays game, I think, is going to tell a lot about how my night went. <laughs> Indians and Cubs. Indians, 3.7 run implied total. Cubs, 4.8. It's a 62% chance to win for the Cubs. Adam Plutko going for Cleveland. Can't say I'm very familiar with him. John Lester going for Chicago. 
Uh, <clears throat> I'm doing all things Cubbies tonight. I'll have a lot of Lester on both sites, and I'll have basically the entire Cubs lineup. Cubs are my fourth most owned stack on FanDuel right now. They're only one percentage point from being right behind the Angels. Um, and then they are my number one stack with a bullet on DraftKings. So, really? What? So, so you right don't now, like... yeah. Okay. Um... There's a reason for this. Let me get to that. Uh, let's see if anything has changed. Ba -ba -ba. Where's the cubbies at? Totals. So... There's not a total out for the Cubs game yet. In fact, the one that's scraping from five dimes says the total is 165. So I don't think that they're going to put up 165 uh, runs tonight. That one, I would say you should definitely roster the Cubs. I put yes. the total in at eight and a half. So if for some reason this is significantly lower than eight and a half, uh, my love for the Cubs bats will be muted a bit. That will increase my love for John Lester. Um, but for right now, if that line hits eight and a half or goes even any higher than that, I'm going to be just overwhelmed with Cubs in my lineups. So hit me with it. Tell me why you hate Lester so much. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a short-ish slate, or I should say there's not a lot of options. So if you want to play Lester, that's fine. I just hate playing guys that suck on the base paths. So <clears throat> that's one of Lester's biggest weaknesses. He's Corrected that a little bit this year. Uh, but the Indians are one of the worst matchups for left-handed pitchers this season. Um, Lester giving up a bunch of hard contact to righties. He hasn't been that lights out against lefties either. And I just really respect this Indians lineup. So I like Lindor, Ramirez, love Jan Gomes for 3,400. Um, Rajay Davis may lead off here. Uh, they've been doing that against lefties some. So he's 3,000 um, with speed. Like, this could be a rough start for Lester. Um, and then Plutko, he went seven and a third, six Ks, three earned runs against the Blue Jays on May 3rd. Looked like a really good start. He looks pretty good in the minors, too, since then. A um, couple pretty solid starts. I don't know a ton about him, but I don't think he's an auto stack and... He could be someone I could actually see myself playing if I do some digging. Um, and he's got really good K stuff in the minors. So I wish I had more to contribute about Plutko, but he I don't think he's... He doesn't have really good K stuff. He doesn't. I mean, Steamer's <clears throat> got him projected for a 6.8 K per nine and a 5.7 FIP. Uh, okay. They're usually not wrong in that direction. So I assume that he's never had any real swing and miss stuff. Let me pull up his uh, minors stuff. Oh. Was well, like on on the for the minor stuff like he's got a game with seven innings eight Ks six innings eight Ks seven and two thirds six Ks so looks like he's got like okay stuff. He's old. I, I mean, is he's he really? 20, he's twenty six. Okay. I mean that's old for so like last year in AAA, hundred and thirty five <clears> innings six point eight Ks per nine, um, wow. which is pedestrian four point seven eight x FIP a five point two nine regular FIP. Uh, he's just, he's just hittable. If he were, you know, 21, I might put a little di different stock in those numbers, but mm -hmm. 26 and a half in AAA and not striking out more than, well, I mean, there's a reason he's not striking anybody else out. If he were striking out nine guys per nine, he'd be in the Indians rotation instead yeah. of like permanently in the Indians rotation, not just up for whatever right now okay that's fair that's my guess um i mean the, the the guys i want against him i had written down were brian rizzo and Contreras. so the good hitters the best hitters for the cubs um so that's without knowing a ton about plutko but i think the cubs are a fine stack like you said I, plutko you know more about him than i do but he doesn't look like some great talent um no. and it is in wrigley Weather's not ideal, but the Cubs have a bunch of good hitters in their lineup that could make Plutko pay. Yeah, I've got, like, my max exposure is for Zobrist, Bryant, uh, Rizzo, spotlight hitter tonight. Uh, Wilson Contreras is, I think, probably the clear best catcher option of the day. 
Uh, I'm getting a lot of Addison Russell, particularly on FanDuel. A shortstop at only 3,000 hitting fifth. I, I love it. Um, and then just a bunch of Schwarber, Baez, and Hayward as well. So I'll have the entire lineup. I'll be one through eight in all sorts of different combinations, plus Lester. Uh, Cubbies are popular for me. I can't get away from them tonight. Unless that line moves to like six or something stupid or the whole other direction and the Cubs become like the chalk hitting team. Because if that guy, if it goes from eight and a half to nine and a half and I'm just wrong, then I think the Cubs might end up being the most popular stack of the day. Yeah, you're right. So they've maybe... got a better price point than the Yankees right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that makes sense. All righty. Orioles and White Sox. Probably going to get this one wrong again today, too. <laughs> Orioles, 4.8 run implied total. White Sox, 4.3. It's a 55% chance to win for the Orioles. Alex Cobb going for Baltimore. Dylan Covey going for Chicago. Um, I got a ton of Alex Cobb right now. Tell me why I'm dumb. Oh, God. Yeah, don't. I, I mean, I wouldn't. Uh, he's 5,400 on DK. He's looked a little bit better. Over his last few starts, um, but man, this guy cannot miss a bat to save his life. 11% K rate against righties. Like, he, I, I just would not play Alex Cobb. So, he, I have him graded out as one of the worst pitchers in the MLB. Um, worst, One of the worst pitchers on the slate. Uh, only above Homer Bailey, which doesn't say much. Uh, I like Trust me, White I hate Sox. it. I hate yeah. it. I, I mean, I like the White Sox stack. Cobb hasn't been blown up in a while, and there's no reason to think that he shouldn't get blown up uh, regularly for me. So, Moncada, Yomer Sanchez, Abreu, Davidson, and Palka, even Wellington Castillo I like. So I'm on the complete opposite side. I'd have a ton of White Sox if I had a bunch of lineups tonight. Oof, all righty. So I've got zero White Sox. Wow. Just full bore, just flat zero <clears throat> right now. Cobb hit That's, my uh, ownership cap on DK, and he got to 17% on FanDuel. Yeah, um, I, I, I don't see it, to be honest. But I won't could have be right. him that much, for sure, because he's not going to be anywhere near that ownership. So I won't need that much exposure. But if we've got him projected at, like, let's just say we have him projected at 5%, which... Might even be high. <laughs> um, I'll probably have Alex Cobb in like the 12 to 15% range. And once again, him, maybe I'll get a nice Alex Cobb and uh, Chris Archer line together and just drink for three or four hours worth of game time because I'll be uh, inconsolable. I'm going to be on the opposite side of a lot of really popular shit tonight. And I don't like it at all. I don't know why it's happening either. It's just that perfect combination of, like, price point and I don't know what. I mean, I I can't get behind the Cobb play. I'd much rather play Archer. So, <clears throat> that's... Yeah, you're on your own with the Cobb play. I, I love the White Sox. So, I will say that. I... Okay, so you don't like the Orioles bats at all? No, I do. Okay. Uh, I've, Orioles are, again, one of my most popular stacks. They're second on FanDuel and on DK. Uh, one through six for me is the most popular. Mancini, Jones, Machado, Scope, Chris Davis, and Pedro Alvarez. I get a little bit of Jace Peterson as well. Um, it's hard to get to Trumbo on DK with Mancini, Chris Davis, and Alvarez all having first base eligibility. So you needed to break the correct way there. Uh, do you think they'll be a popular stack? I assume yeah. that they're going to be popular, but way less popular than what I have them. So I'll pull their ownerships down, and it'll probably get redistributed to, like, the Reds or, uh, I don't know, the Angels or something. Yeah, I mean, I think they'll be popular. Kobe is the guy that people love stacking against last year. He was pretty awful um, and then wasn't good in his only start in the MLB this year. But since going back down, it looks like... He's been really good just going by game logs, um, which doesn't tell the whole story, obviously, especially with the minors when you don't have 
some of the advanced metrics that we like. So, I mean, maybe he's figured something out. Maybe he's just a better pitcher or he's throwing something new or throwing something more often. Um, so I'm a little bit worried about just full on stacking against Kobe, but if he's the pitcher that he was last year and early this year, then the Orioles should bomb him because in Vegas likes them to do that five run total for them. Um, yeah, I've got no problem with the Orioles. Just a little bit worried that Covey might have something figured out. Yeah, I, uh, I'm going to end up with a ton of Orioles for like the uh, however many straight days in a row. They, they were shit yesterday. They were shit the day before that, I think. Uh, hasn't been going great. But I'm going right back to them. So give me Mancini, Jones, Machado, Scope, Davis, Alvarez. We'll see where we go from there. It's shaping up to be one of those nights where I'm either going to destroy DFS or just absolutely burn money. I might as well just go hand out my debit card to somebody on the streets. Yeah, that's DFS, though. I know, it's fun. I, I'm almost, like, happy that it's lining up like this. I have a feeling a lot of I'm going to get a lot of I told you so's in the uh, comment section at, like, right. I don't know, 11.30 p.m. tonight. <laughs> Good. That's what we're here for. Bash us when you lose money. Yeah, I'm cool with it. Trust me, I'll be losing it too. <laughs> uh, Mariners and A's. Mariners 4.3 run implied total. A's 4.2. It's a 52% chance to win for the Mariners. Marco Gonzalez going for Seattle. Daniel Gossett going for Oakland. I don't have either of the pitchers, and I have no more than 5% of any one hitter in these games. No A, Basically, no A's. Uh, this game's just like a no-go for me. Are you focused on anybody here? Uh, a little bit on the A's side, the A's hitting. So I like uh, Chapman, Davis, Lowry. But um, like Marco Gonzalez is okay, I think. Not okay to play here. I wouldn't play him. But um, just a few hitters against him, not full-on stacking against him. Uh, do you have Chris Davis in this lineup? Because now that I'm looking at it, he's not in the projected lineup. I okay. I, I think he was out yesterday, too. So possibly dealing with an injury or something. I must have missed it. Um, so on Gossett's side, he just gives up a bunch of hard contact to righties. Um, if Nelson Cruz is in the lineup, I think he's fine. But, yeah, this game mostly an avoid for me. Uh, Chris Davis is likely going to the DL with a right groin strain. Right. Oh, okay. That was a few days ago, I think, wasn't it? And then he they just kind of sat him out, saw if he, and then we're, we're seeing if he could stick it out or go to the DL, right? Uh, this was an article from 2 o'clock this morning. Oh, wow. Okay. Chris likely Davis. Heading to, likely headed to the disabled list today. Okay. Um, Did he end up playing last night? I don't remember. I only had one A stack. I don't know. Cubs line just came out. Opened at 8.5, which is exactly what I have it in there. So, all y'all, suck it. A uh, lot of money coming in immediately on the under, however. So, right now, I would move that 8.5 to 8 just in my sheet. And at that point, it's just going to tell me that I like Lester more and I'll still have a bunch of Cubs. So everything I said <clears throat> 10 minutes ago all holds true. Sweet. You are the Lester. Vegas savant. Give me that, give me that John Lester. Last <laughs> Do game. not give me that John Lester. I bet you you would have a ton of John Lester if he was on the Twins. Oh, God. I would have even less. No way. You'd love him. You'd be like, oh, <clears throat> John Lester would be your Kyle Gibson if he were on the Twins. If Kyle well, Gibson yeah, were on the Cubs Kyle... right now, man, I'd, I would have been talking about how much I like Kyle Gibson. You'd have been like, I hate him, man. Just can't if you were on my Braves, though, it. if you were on my Braves, though, that'd be a different story. <laughs> my Braves, so man. Fun. My Braves. I might get you a John Lester <laughs> jersey shirt, but made in the Twins colors <laughs> maybe maybe i don't like lester because of all the the years i've had to root for him in the postseason and he he can't throw over to first and it's just so tilting to watch yeah i mean it's a reasonable stance to take it is incredibly frustrating <laughs> last game rockies and dodgers and honestly it's a weird one 
Rockies, 3.2 run implied total. Dodgers, 4.1. It's a 61% chance to win for the Dodgers. Kyle Freeland going for Colorado. Kenta Maeda going for the Dodgers. Kyle Freeland is the most, second most expensive pitcher on the slate on DraftKings. And that is ludicrous. I've, I would rather have Chad Cool. I'd rather have Marco Gonzalez. I'd rather have <laughs> Alex Cobb. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can't play Kyle Freeland on DraftKings. Just, you just can't do it. Um, I don't get any Freeland at all. And I think Maeda is, I don't know, maybe like the best non-DeGrom option of the day. Yeah, I think Maeda is the best non-DeGrom option of the day. $9,800. Uh, good matchup. Rockies outside of Coors against a righty has been money. Um, like, I don't know. He's, he's just a pretty clear number two for me. Uh, if you want to put price in there, that's fine. But for me, he's, he's the clear number two. Um, and it's not even that close. Freeland is, yeah, he's 10, one and he's really, really good at creating soft contact and really good against lefties. So if you were like priced in the Chad Cool range, I'd probably have interest in Freeland, um, right? Just because of the slate, but can't do it for ten one. Just absolutely cannot do that. I I don't mind Justin Turner against him, but I'm not stacking against Freeland. Just so much respect for how he creates ground balls and just never gets hit very hard, even in cores, which is really impressive. Um, and you got a big park in L.A. night game and stuff, so. I don't really have a, a lot that I like outside of Maeda here. You don't like Dodgers bats? <clears throat> Just Turner. I got and maybe like Taylor maybe Taylor Kemp. Barnes, Turner, Kemp in ten percent. I think this could go up if this line moves a little bit. Uh, Rockies sixty three weighted runs created plus against righties this year, striking out you know more than league average. Uh, slugging and ISO both well below league average. Um, I'm gonna. The, I hope the Dodgers end up as like one of my sneaky, more popular stacks when all of this shakes out. I seen that line to move a little bit, it's seven and a half, and shaded on the under pretty sizably. Um, I think I might need to drop it already. What do I have it in here? Now I have it in at seven point three. It's probably even lower than that now. Yeah, I'm. I mean, I don't mind a Dodgers bat or two, but Freeland's never someone I target heavily. <clears throat> yeah, I just, I have very little respect for Kyle Freeland. Well, we're we're on the opposite sides of a bunch of stuff then tonight. Yeah, Red no, Sox versus Archer. Rare-ish. Yeah, that's all right. I feel like it makes me feel like I've got a bug in my sheet. <laughs> no, you don't. You're you're more with Vegas, and I'm more against Vegas. I would say than most people. Yeah, maybe. <clears throat> I don't know. It's gonna look interesting after tonight. I'm excited for it now. Now, now I just want 7 o'clock to come. Yeah. Tune into the live stream tonight, people, because <clears throat> apparently I've got uh, incredibly unique takes. You do. Uh, Riggs says hi, everybody. I'm assuming everyone heard that dog bark. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he's barking at. I'm pretty sure he was just laying upstairs on the bed to sleep. So uh, <clears throat> no one's here. It's Wednesday at 10 o'clock in the morning. Just, the life just announcing his presence. Yeah, he doesn't really announce his presence all that much. He does outside, very rarely inside. Not much of an indoor barker. He's too busy like eating tennis balls and shit. Uh, like let's take a look at some stacks. Or some uh, crunches. Stacks, I guess, too. Alrighty, what do we got here? Give me two pitchers. <clears throat> let's go DeGrom and Maeda. Let's just see if that's doable i'm sure you can get some stuff in there that so you i like. got two of them come up in the top hundred they are both uh orioles dodger stacks with there you a go. one-off that's, reds hitter that's got you written all over it yeah uh, winker winker orioles dodgers that should be your lineup right there i, I mean it, it it will be <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the shitty part of it all for sure gonna have that i, I don't mind it yeah I mean, if you don't like Freeland as much as I do, then sure. Uh, let me lock DeGrom and Maeda 
Well, no, give me give me your two like, or, or is Degrom so, Maeda like your? Would they would be like your your one lineup starters? Um, it would probably be Degrom and Sabathia just to save a little bit, or or Sabathia and Maeda if I could stomach fading Degrom, but I don't know if I can. All right, let's look at Sabathia Degrom. And we'll do 20 fresh ones just to see. Uh, Reds, Angels. Yeah. Pirates, yes. Orioles. Cubs, Mets. So that extra 2K that you save, or about 2K, really opens up a lot, it looks like. Yeah. Uh, like Mets... Mets Pirates, I like a lot. I see one down there. Um, yeah, Cervelli, Bell, Mercer, Dickerson, Zobrist as a one-off outfielder, which yeah. I'd be perfectly okay with. And then Bruce Flores as Drupal Cabrera. Um, I don't have much of an issue with that line at all. Yeah. Man, oh, man. I love this. Looking at these crunches and seeing how it all fits together is like my favorite part of all of this. Just from a drafting perspective. We should just do the whole show like this. I'm sure people would love that. Uh, they would. That's the craziest part. We'd probably triple our viewership. <laughs> right. If we wanted to feed DeGrom, it's got to be Maeda and someone, right? I mean, I, yeah, it's just... I would think so. I don't think there's even enough to pay up for if you don't have Maeda without DeGrom. Let's look at Maeda and I mean you're not gonna let me pick Lester or Archer or Cobb. No, go ahead. I mean it's just the price thing. You just wanna see how stuff fits together. So just yeah, go with go with whoever you want. Okay. Lester and Maeda I don't really love. <clears throat> I mean yeah. Pirate Great okay, so Pirates more. Cubs with a one off Wilmer Flores I can get to. Cervelli, yeah. Harrison, one, one, two, three, five from the Pirates, Rizzo, Baez, and Zobrist from the Cubs, and then a one-off Wilmer Flores. I like this last lineup quite a bit, and I don't get the sense that uh, it would be terribly popular. Yeah, I think you'd probably be okay with that. I mean, the Pirates and Cubs will get, or Pirates and yeah, Cubs will get some ownership for sure, but I don't think Lester will be highly owned. So if I'm wrong on him, and you're over the field, you. It's a good play if he can control his stuff and keep these Indians off base. Let's take one look at the <clears throat> handle so we don't get screamed at. Yes. Um, I have a hard time not looking at DeGrom here. Uh, just because of his price point, he's not in like a I want to fade the chalk type scenario. I'll probably move my base exposure even higher on DeGrom. Because I think that he's just so far and away the best option here that I'll want to have a little bit more. Yeah. I would probably want to use uh, a less popular stack. But like I, this first, I mean, just this first one in general. Reds, Peraza, Winker, Suarez, and Votto. The best parts of the Angels. I love that. I love this Orioles, Angels, Pirates, Reds. There you can finally get to yeah, like Yankees stack with the angels um that's why Degrom is so scary tonight because you get Degrom's upside and you don't have to make any concessions with some of the best stacks of the night that's the most terrifying part of fading Degrom. yeah on FanDuel especially just yeah. like I, I don't know how I would fade that so if you've got the stones to do it and you think you can find a pivot then go ahead but I'm, I wouldn't be so, like, my DeGrom lineups have, let's say, an average of, like, 122, 123 on FanDuel. Can I just, can I filter out everything but DeGrom here? I guess I can. I just need to select everybody individually. Nope, that's not how you do it. Is it shift? I want to make a point about this. It's something Alex talks about. Shift. So, let's do Maeda... Straley, Cobb, Lester. Oh, that's the ground. I'm really bad at this. 
but slow to like respond when I make the click. So I'm trying to mm -hmm. show some patience. So in every lineup but Degrom, uh, I'm ba like the highest lines that I'm getting to are basically what Degrom's average is. So just Degrom on his own is pulling your average lineup up multiple points. That's why yeah. it's you can you can stomach having more of him against a, a highly chalky play. Uh, he just brings your baseline up because there's no one else around him with his sort of ceiling. Mm -hmm. Agreed. That's something you would see in the premium content <clears throat> written by Osimo himself. Uh, he spoke about that uh, yesterday, actually, in his article. So uh, that's what you're missing out on, premium content. I highly recommend checking it out. No hockey tonight, I'm assuming, or is it Game, game 7? Seven? It is Game, game seven. 7. I don't know if it's yep. there tomorrow. Caps, Lightning, uh, 8 Eastern, so this should be a fun one. Um, yeah, I'll have the showdown article. Hopefully we can duplicate Monday. Monday was awesome if you read the article. Um, I took all my plays basically from that article, so... It was great, and this should be a fun game to watch and a fun game to play showdown. Let's see. Tampa Bay, mm -hmm. decent-sized favorite? Minus yeah, 140? I think, yeah, they should be. They should be favored in this game for sure at home, and I think they are the better team, but one game sample, you never know what can happen. We're cheering for uh, Washington here? I'd like to see Washington win, yeah. yeah. That'd be a fun series. I would probably watch... The Stanley Cup Finals, actually. Yeah. I don't generally watch a ton of hockey. Yeah, I'm rooting for Ovechkin. I just, I can't stand the he can't win narrative thing. So we've got uh, Cavs Celtics <clears throat> game five tonight. Cavs one point favorite in Boston. Uh, Houston picked up the win last night, so that that series is two two. Um, conference Finals in the NBA are lit, people. Not that we're surprised by that, although in a way we are. Uh, yeah, the games the games haven't been that good besides last night. Like that was that was a fun game towards the end. I thought the Warriors are gonna pull away again, but it was a, such a weird game. Warriors whooped their ass early. Rockets came storming back, and Warriors had a monster third quarter, and then the Rockets just put them on lock. The Warriors scored was it fourteen points in the fourth quarter. Yeah, dude, it was like it was Something eighty-two like seventy when I flipped it on. I was like, oh, okay, they're twelve. This, this one's over. Twelve. Uh, twelve point. Yeah. How did it's, the like that's that's, that's nuts. Hard to do. Yeah. Real hard so, to do. Good for the Rockets, man. That's gonna be a fun finish. Hope it goes seven. You and me both. So that's all I got. Spotlight hitters, pitchers, and stacks will be out today. Check it out. Uh, I'm playing the day slate, so hit me up with any questions if you want to. And uh, we will talk to you again in, oh, uh, live stream tonight at 6. Uh, me and Chris Baggs. Come check it out. Uh, did anybody get a dong last night? Uh, no, I had I had Mankata. I don't think anybody did. I had uh, Travis Shaw. That didn't happen. And coward Chris Baggs took Giancarlo Stanton. And he did not get one. Yeah. And ugh, don't even get me started on that pick. I'm going to berate him heavily tonight on the show so if you want to watch me verbally abuse chris for at least 10 minutes uh tune in tonight at six o'clock best I'll of be luck there. tonight we'll talk to you later